Okay, this is the demonstration video for the Contiki 645. I'm going to start on the inside in, uh, in the first instance and I'll start with the rear bed arrangement and how that's made up. So I've taken all the cushions off the back um, and I'll just show you how the bed frame works. So you pull those together like that and then this leg drops into the centre. So that forms the base for the bed. And you do the same on the other side. I've just piled the cushions on, on that side for now. But um, if you do the same on the other side, that forms the base for the bed. I'll make the bed up now and show you how that works. Okay, so that's the uh, bed made up. And you're simply dropping the back rest into the center uh, to drop flat to create the bed at the back. So that's the bed arrangement. Okay, so while we're at the back, this is a fold over table in the center so that's how that works you just flip that over skylight is operated just by winding this handle that lifts up like that Blackout blind and fly screen. And that's the same for all the windows. So that's the fly that's the blackout blind and then the fly screen clips onto the blackout blind so you can have it half and half if you wanted to. So television cabinet, it's got an aerial fitted and that's where the aerial comes out. You mounted a TV on there, that slides out and then pivots. The aerial is mounted in the wardrobe and it's an omnidirectional aerial so if you unscrew that there and this you can push that up through the roof and then you get that extends out onto the roof then you can spin it round and um, this here if you wind that round the, the, the aerial that goes on the roof is like a delta shape flat like that and if you wind that handle like that it's pivoting the disc just to get, allow you to get a better signal should you need to so before you set off you need to ensure that that's in the down position and secured by tightening that and that you know that delta shaped uh, flat disc is pointed forwards because that red dot indicates that it's pointed in the right direction this is the charger unit, so that's uh, whirring away uh, and charging up the battery. You've got your 12 volt fuses there, so they will, um, they, they're there to guard the 12 volt appliances. So if you sh should you have a problem with the 12 volt appliance, such as the pump, etc., then that's your first port of call to just check whether one of those is, is blown. That's the circuit breaker for the mains, um, so like a, a domestic. Um, circuit breaker at home uh, so if they're tripped out in the down position you can see everything goes off so they need to be in up position like that there's a test button just there if you press that then that should test the whole system that light there if that illuminates it's indicating that there's reverse polarity so what that means is that the it doesn't really happen in this country but um, if you go abroad um, the positive is on the negative side it doesn't it shouldn't really make much difference but some appliances such as mains televisions won't like that um, supply so you can get a reverse polarity um, cable that which, which which fits onto this which I'll show you outside in a second and that reverses the polarity back around the table is stored in here so that's the freestanding table that goes in the rear lounge so that's in the wardrobe. Just while we're here, there's a uh, blanking curtain. Comes across, you need to take that armrest out and then it, it uh, locates into that bracket there. Just in the floor here, uh, there's a hatch that can be lifted up. All that is, is the water pump. So that's your water pump there. And um, that is a diaphragm to regulate the pressure for the, for the water. Um, 
I'll open up the tap in a second and just show you how the water pump works and how the uh, pressure system works. But th those are those two devices in, the, in, in there. Uh, for draining down for winter use, you do need to um, drop all of the water out of the uh, fresh water tank. Um, so the way you do that is to lift up this valve here. So that's in the closed position. You need to lift that up and that will drop all of the water out of the motorhome. So what you need to do as you do that is switch the pump on and all the taps so that it pressurizes the system and pumps all the water out of that valve. So when you lift that valve up, what that's doing is opening up the valve and it's, it's, it's pouring the water out onto the floor uh, via a tube that's underneath the, the motor on the floor. Just while we're on the subject of water, the, the, the mains water tank is along the back here. Uh, you have got access to it via a, uh, a round um, threaded cap which is just mounted underneath this cushion. You shouldn't really need to do anything with that unless you want to sterilise the tank but I wouldn't drink, use this for drinking water, use bottled water. So I'll show you how to fill that when we do the outside section of the video. So that brings us on neatly to the control panel. So the first thing I'll show you is the water pump uh, and the water system. So um, I'll come to the other controls on this in a second, but that switches the water pump on basically. Now it uses on this, I think it uses a pressure switch. So um, what it does is it senses the pressure in the system and should the pressure drop, it then makes the pump run to pump water out of your tap and it'll keep running until it builds up a pressure that's set by that switch and then it'll stop running. So in order to get water out of your taps, that must be switched on. When you first um, fill the uh, tank full of water, so you'll notice the pump has actually stopped running there now. So when you first uh, fill the tank full of water, you'll have a load of air in the pipes and the tank. So that then needs to be purged out. So you need to switch the tap on with the pump switched on until you get a pure flow of water coming out of the uh, tap like that. So it, you'll get it spluttering when you first switch it on and that's because it's pushing all the air out of the system. You need to do that on both hot and cold. So you're, you're pushing the air out of the uh, pipe system on both the hot and cold side of the plumbing system. You need to do that in the bathroom as well as the uh, kitchen area. So that's the first thing you should do when you uh, fill the uh, van full of water, fill the, fill the tank full of water. So you're doing exactly the same thing in the bathroom um, until you get a pure flow of water coming out of that tap. And you need to do the same again for the shower. So moving on um, on the control panel. That basically switches your whole motorhome on and off. So that's the on off switch there. Okay, so water pump. That switches from battery to battery. Um, now, it's actually running on leisure battery as, as we speak. It, it's not allowing me to switch over to engine battery, which is probably a good thing because if you flatten your, if you flatten your engine battery, you're in trouble, you can't even move off. So as we scroll through this menu, the, that, that's just in its home position, so it's showing 6.6 .6 degrees, 8.42, that's the time. That's just a version of the control panel, you don't need to worry about that. So you can set an alarm, should you wish to. Set your time. Um, right water tank fill don't even don't 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 bother with that that's if you want to fill the water tank from um, an external vessel of water which is pointless you might as well just fill it via a hose pipe which I'll show you on the outside section of the video pump select you want to keep that on internal you can select an external pump as I say but that's to fill the fill the internal tank from an external tank which is defeating the object really uh, wastewater there's nothing in it I'll show you how um, to drain that in a second. So you need to keep an eye on that. It will actually warn you when that's full. So there's, a, there's, a, there's a, underneath the motor, and there's a, a tank which um, takes the, all the wastewater that goes down the 
sink uh, in the kitchen and in the bathroom and anything that goes down the shower so that's called grey water and there's a tap to empty that outside which I'll show you fresh water there is a little bit in there uh, as you can see as I open the tap um, probably a good idea uh, to get rid of that because if water freezes in the tank um, it'll expand it'll crack the tank and all the plumbing system so you need to drain this motorhome down in winter um, there's a there's a boiler and um, which I'll come to the controls in a second that also needs to be drained down so that's telling you about your fresh water levels vehicle battery 12 and a half volts good condition Leisure battery 13.1. Now it's showing a higher voltage because we're plugged in and the charger's doing its job. And we're back to the main menu. So next to this here is the heating controls. So this here basically is selecting your fuel. So in the middle it's gas only. If you go up one, it's low wattage electric. Up one again, high wattage electric. So if you want a, a site which has got low amp uh, power supply, then use that setting. If you, um, this is to obviously heat your water because the, the main heater isn't working. Um, that if you're on, are off grid and you're not on the electric, then use the middle one. That's gas and electric at low amp, uh, low wattage, and then that is gas and electric at high wattage. <clears throat> this is to select the how you want that fuel to heat what and how so on this you're only going to be able to select these top two um, buttons here so if we put this on electric the two upper ones are to select water heating only at 40 degrees water heating only at 60 degrees off Heating of the motorhome, which I explained isn't working, and heating of the motorhome and hot water. So, we're back in the up position, so this is the only position you're going to be able to use this in. That's telling you that it's, it's working, that's telling you that it's heating but hasn't reached temperature yet. When that goes out, you know that, it's, uh, that the water um, has reached its temperature. You need to purge... Uh, the water through the boiler as I said so if you, if you if you don't switch the tap on and get a pure flow of water coming out the hot tap it means that you're heating fresh air in the boiler so you need to fill the boiler and purge the water system before you switch that on so these are just light switches next to the door don't know whether you can see that switching the light on and off uh, I think that's the awning light actually for outside that is your step in and out button That's that button there. Okay, so extract a fan. Um, on and off. Off. Fan control. And light switch. So the oven, um, it's got an electric ring on it. Um, be very careful when using that. Let that cool down before you let the lid down because it will, it'll maintain residual temperature and actually crack the lid so that stays hot for a long time so four ring and um, gas sorry three three gas and one electric um straightforward enough so the controls are indicating here which ring is what grill uh, and the grill control is that one there and then your oven which is that one there and they the grill and the oven work on gas so bed, straightforward, the ladder's there, um, it will lift up like that. So during the day, it just lets a bit more light in through the, in through the windscreen. Okay, okay, so the seat belts um, are here, and then the receiver is there. Um, so when the passengers are in the seated position, this section here pushes back so the passengers' legs can go down that area there. When you're making up the bed, <clears throat> this section pulls out like that, and then this section pushes forward to bridge that gap, 
and then I'll arrange the cushions and show you how that goes to make this bed up. So that's the bed made up. Uh, so that's the they do class it as a double, but it's not it's not massively wide. So that's the six berth. So you've got the overcab bed, this, and then your bed at the back. So in the front area here, that's where the leisure battery is stored. Again, don't really need to do anything with that. It's the charger doing its job, so I'm just pointing out where that's stored. Just come back to the wardrobe area. That's where the boiler um, is housed. There's a, a panel that comes out there to reveal the boiler. You shouldn't need to do anything with that, but I'm just reminding you that underneath, underneath that panel there is where I showed you that um, valve to drain the water out of the boiler. It's deadly important that you, you, you drain that down. If you're not going to use it, or in winter conditions, open that valve up, switch the pump on, open up the taps and let all the water out of the, of the motor home and that will then drain the boiler and the fresh tank. There is actually one more drain point while we're on the subject of draining this down. So this is it, I'm, I, where I am now is in the rear lounge uh, and the cabinet sits on this panel here. Now you need to lift the cabinet off in order to reveal this. screwed lid there and if you can see just in the bottom there there's a bung in the uh, in the water tank so you need to remove that to let all the water out the residual water out of the uh, mains water tank so you need to open up that valve that I showed you the, the yellow valve which is in the middle hatch take the back um, cabinet off the rear lounge open up this and take that bung out let the pump run and open up all the taps and that's the uh, drain procedure complete okay so if we go around the outside i'll just show you the various things that you need to know um, on the outside of this motor so i'll just start by showing you where the bonnet catch is which is just under there Okay, so under here you've got uh, washer fluid fill, coolant, uh, oil fill, dipstick's just there, uh, power steering fluid, uh, brake fluid, uh, and your battery's there should you need to uh, change that or ever jump start it. Okay, so moving around, this is just a locker, external locker. Okay, so this is the toilet. Um, now, into there you need to put, you need to fill that, that's the flush. So that's the flush reservoir. So you put pink chemical into this to stop mildew building up and into it. And put a hose pipe into there and fill it until it pours out. And then you know that the flush reservoir is full for the toilet. Underneath that is the cassette, and that's the uh, the tank that all the toilet waste goes into that needs emptying. Okay, so that's the cassette. To empty this, you're pulling out the cassette. So to do that, you lift up that tab there, slide this out. Okay, so in theory then this is full, and um, what you do is you Slide that nozzle that way, unscrew this cap, pull that off, and pour away through that nozzle. So on the sides they've got the designated disposal points. As you pour in, press that button there and it lets air in as liquid's coming out of there so it doesn't glug and slush. <clears throat> what you need to do is put the blue chemical into this. Um, so you need a layer of water on the, on the base of the cassette. Okay, so you're sliding that panel back, open up this, which is a, a slide valve, and then pour into there a, a layer of water on the bottom and the blue chemical. Now what that does is break all the solids down and all the smells down. Before you put the cassette back in, 
that, that nozzle must be fully facing forward that way because it locates onto a, a mechanism on the inside. I, I'll actually go back in and show you the toilet um, control which is inside. Okay, so that's the cassette back in there. So this is the toilet on the inside. And that's the, that's the flush button for it. Okay, so you're pressing that and it's pumping the water that you put into that um, flush reservoir into there. There's obviously none here at the moment. When it's full, when the cassette is full, which I just showed you how to empty, that light will illuminate. This lever here opens and closes that blade which I showed you on the cassette itself. So that's the cassette actually sliding in underneath this here and that lever opens and closes the blade. So the way to use it is open that up, use the toilet, um, press the flush and then close the blade up. Don't travel with that open because obviously it'll slush about in the cassette underneath. Okay so moving further around the van then, at the back here is the gas locker. <clears throat> So two propane gas bottles is what you need to go in here. They're secured around the cylinder via these straps. And then this hose here attaches onto this. Going into the bottles. So then this goes onto the bottle and you go in reverse thread. So you're going anti-clockwise. So you need to what you need to do, push that nozzle up to the front of that bull nose, secure it in place with your finger like that, and then start to turn it anti-clockwise. So you're going clockwise to untighten it. And that's how you connect your motor up to the uh, gas supply. Uh, so it's been gas tested. Um, on top of the bottles is a is a tap uh, that switches those on and off now don't travel with the gas switched on uh, if you have a crash and there's a gas leak then obviously gas can escape so just make sure that the gas is switched off as you're traveling so the bike rack um, I'll show you how that works so this pulls down like that and then the bikes uh, go on to here so the wheels sit on there and then these you press that button in there pull out that strap they go over the wheels to secure the wheels to those racks and then these arms here um, they fix onto the crossbar of the bikes ladder for entry up onto the roof and that's uh, you need the key for that so you fill the water um, so this is your, your water tank and that's just filled with a hose pipe until water pours back out of it so um, there's an overflow on top of the tank you, you can't overfill it but uh, you will get back pressure so you know it's full when water starts to pour that way out of the filling nozzle so again important that that's drained in freezing weather conditions and that's drained via the uh, screw cap that I showed you and you need to take off the rear uh, cabinet in the rear lounge area. This is just storage. Um, now the wastewater tank is drained via that tap there. So you're opening that tap to get rid of the waste water. So that's the waste, that's just residual waste in there. It was showing that there was zero in there, but there's always uh, residual. So I'll leave that open draining now, so there won't be any in it when you pick it up. Moving along, this is the um, exhaust for the boiler. So what that does is when it's being heated on gas, it, the uh, steam, carbon monoxide, uh, and exhaust gas comes out of this valve here. You need to make sure that that's not um, uh, clogged up with any debris uh, if you parked up close to a hedge or another motorhome or a wall it can it'll sense that carbon monoxide is going back into there and it'll switch the boiler off so that's again just the water heater uh, this is the mains connection I'll just grab the mains cable and I'll show you how that goes in there 
Okay, so this is the mains cable. When you're putting that into the side of the motorhome, you need to lift that up so that it looks like that. So when it's inserted in, that's how it looks. To release it, you're pressing that tab down, pulling out like that. So that lid ends up in a little shelf just there. This is a barbecue point. Um, so if you want to barbecue outside, you need a you need a bayonet fitting that clips into that, and then you attach the hose for a barbecue or an external gas heater, and it just literally clips into that. But you do need a you do need a fitting for that. We sell them in the shop. These are the vents for the fridge, and um, again, just need to be kept cl cl uh, cl clear of debris. So it draws air in at the bottom, expels hot air at the top. Um, so that again they need to be kept clear 